Okay, so welcome back to the third video. And we left off with this uh, Mr. Beckman. And Mr. Beckman, of course, made the first UV-Vis spectrometer and sold it commercially to laboratories across the nation. And UV-Vis became commonplace in a laboratory. And it really is still commonplace. You know, even the poorest of laboratories now have a UV-Vis instrument uh, on site. Uh, these things have become so reasonable, the price tags of them are so low that it really is a staple and something that's commonplace, just like an analytical balance would be, or just like a pH meter would be. So uh, you'll be able to find UV vis spectrometers anywhere. Uh, 1940, uh, just a little bit of timeline about the uh, UV vis spectrometer itself. Uh, this is the first uh, commercially available UV vis that was introduced, and again, that was by Beckman. 1941, we got a modification of the spectrometer, and that was kind of the Model D. In 1946, we have a company called Carey Instruments. And the funny thing happens with Carey Instruments. Uh, Carey Instruments goes out and they begin to get started. So they're founded in 1946. Uh, it was named after Howard Carey. Howard Carey was a vice president for Beckman. So they had a disagreement, uh, those two men, and the disagreement led to their split. And Howard Carey goes off and says, fine, I'm going to take what I've learned by working with the Beckman Company, and I'm going to start my own business up. And my own business, I'm going to name after myself, and I'm going to call it Carey Instruments instead. And it produces the Carey version of the instrument. So now we've got some competition. Mr. Beckman has some competition in the UV Viz market, and this is from his previous vice president that worked for his company just a uh, couple of years back. In the 1950, we see a mass production of UV vis spectrometers that begin to happen. And this mass production, like anything, begins to decrease the cost. So the cost of the instrument begins to plummet. So of course that probably doesn't make Mr. Beckman happy because his instruments are running cheaper. And of course that doesn't probably make Howard Carey happy because his instruments are getting sold cheaper. Uh, but the positive side of that is that if they didn't go cheaper, maybe people wouldn't purchase as many of them. So in the long run, there's a possibility that they still made money off of these cheaper instruments. 1953, Bausch and Lohm introduces the Spec 20. So two companies weren't good enough. We now have a third company that comes into the picture. And they say, you know, not everybody needs these research instruments. Uh, some people just need a very simple instrument. And they called this a Spec 20. We still have some Spec 20s in our laboratory. So if you want to see one of the older Spec 20s, you're more than welcome to ask us. We'll pull it out. It's in our lab. We'll just open the drawer up and you can see what this instrument looks like. Many high schools also have a Spec 20 because they are the cheapest version of a UV vis spectrometer that's out there. Uh, so ask around. Ask your chemistry teachers. Ask your biology teachers. Ask your physics teachers. Maybe they have a Spec 20 sitting around somewhere on the shelf that they've not used in a while. Um, or maybe they still use it in their uh, curriculum. So you never know, but ask. So that's our Spec 20. 1954, the Carry 14 was released from Carry Instruments. Uh, so what this was is an instrument that we called a double beam. So instead of using one beam of light, this instrument used two beams of light, and no other instrument really utilized that up to that point. 1963, we get another company called Jazzco that introduces what we called the UV-5. 1966, we get a company called Varian, and Varian comes in and purchases carry instruments, so they begin to sell out. I guess Mr. Beckman was laughing when that happened. Maybe not. Maybe they got more money. 1969, a couple of years later, uh, Cecil makes the CE212, which is the first variable wavelength for an HPLC instrument. Uh, so we begin to see the merger and the marriage 
of a UV vis instrument with other pieces of equipment in the laboratory and we kind of merged them together and made a combo unit and Cecil was one of the first people that did that so now I took a UV vis instrument hooked it up to another instrument called an HPLC system and we began to do some analysis with it. 1969 Hewlett Packard got into the business. HP, believe it or not, yes Hewlett Packard has a scientific division. They just don't make printers and computers. So Hewlett Packard releases the PDA which is kinda like a UV vis detector on steroids. It does a much better job and it looks for more things and it's much quicker. 1980 we finally get our first computer controlled spectrometer. Up until that point they were manual. In the 2000s we began to see a new birth of UV Viz. We thought that it was over but in the year 2000 we get micro sampling. We figured out in a laboratory that sometimes we didn't have a lot of sample to measure. So could we make an instrument that could literally take a drop or a couple of drops of a solution and measure it? And the answer is yes. We finally get that in 2000. Uh, 2000 we finally get Thermo which is a brand of Fisher Scientific they're very related uh, makes the Genesis 10 and this is what you will be using in our laboratory and it minimizes the stray light and this time it doesn't use traditional bulbs like the other ones have used we get what we call a xenon arc bulb that makes this instrument work the way that it does and we'll talk about that and why that's so important and then in 2010 Jazzco they haven't went away they're still out there they finally give us a spectrometer that literally takes a micro drop uh, we can put one small drop of solution on this instrument and we can do data analysis without a problem so this is the history and timeline of the UV vis instruments all the way back from the 1940. The reason I do this is because I like for you to become familiar with the manufacturers. And one of the manufacturers that I would like for you to have a little bit of respect for is Cary. And uh, believe it or not, Cary Instruments uh, had a major base in Raleigh and Research Triangle Park right here in North Carolina and uh, this carry instrument when they were bought out by Varian Varian kept the location here so we literally could call up Varian and Varian would be in Raleigh Durham Research Triangle Park area and they could bring their sales reps and some of their portable instrumentation down to us and do demonstrations for us the problem is that Varian now though has been bought out again so Varian purchases carry and then someone purchases Varian and this happened in the mid 2000s uh, 2008 2005 somewhere in there and uh, uh, the company that bought Varian out was Agilent uh, and Agilent is one of the biggest names in a laboratory as far as equipment is concerned so again we get another major player in the field uh, they wanted to boost their spectroscopy end of their company and they looked at Varian and knew that Varian had a niche for spectroscopy because they date back into the 1940s really with their technology uh, so they were a staple so Agilent merges with Varian buys them out uh, takes their spectrometers not just UV vis but everything and morphs it into their company so all of that uh, was right here in the state of North Carolina uh, a couple of hours up the road and uh, uh, their uh, company is now Agilent not just Varian or Carry Instruments any longer okay so uh, a little pictures of uh, some of the instruments uh, that you um, uh, will see across the spectrum. Uh, UV vis spectrometers come in all forms and all sizes uh, just like TVs, just like DVD players, uh, just like anything else. Uh, they do all the same job but they just look different. Some of them are prettier than others. Some of them look nicer on the shelf. 
some of them, depending on the bells and whistles that you order, can maybe outperform some other pieces of equipment. Uh, but this is an assortment of different types of uh, UV vis spectrometers that you might see in a laboratory. Uh, so this one up here at the very top is the SPEC 20. So again, if your high school uh, has a SPEC 20, uh, this is probably something of what it would look like. Uh, it has an analog meter here, uh, so it wasn't a digital readout. Uh, some of the newer SPEC 20s were digital readouts, but this is kind of the true SPEC 20 that was made during the day. Uh, here was a entry port, so I would flip open this lid and I would put my sample down into that lid and close the lid up so I could analyze it. And then number two and number four and number one are just adjustments. They're adjustments that you need to make on the SPEC 20 to make it work. Uh, so if your high school has one, it will probably look similar to this one. Again, ask around. They might have it. If they don't and you want to see one of these in person, let us know and we'll open up our door and we'll show you our SPEC 20s that we still have that we no longer use. Uh, this is where we started. Uh, after we got rid of our SPEC 20s, we bought our CECLs. And uh, again, CECL was one of the staples. Uh, so some of our older instruments look like these CECLs in our laboratory. We have a total of six. And uh, this big plate that's right here opens up. And on the inside is where you would put your sample. Uh, the nice thing about the CECLs during the time, they weren't computer integrated, but what they did have was a digital display readout right here on the screen. So not only did it just tell me the electronic number of what the data coming from the instrument would be doing, uh, but it would give me graphs and it would give me pictures as well, and that was something kind of new at the time. Uh, so I do have a digital readout that's right here. But now we're better than that. We don't have to rely on that digital readout. Uh, we can do that on computer screens nowadays. Uh, here is a Beckman instrument. Uh, this was not the original. Uh, this was um, a newer model than what was getting released. Uh, but you can kind of see this instrument somewhat older. You can just tell by looking at it. Uh, but it's still the same concept. There's a door here that opens up and this is where you would put your sample down into and then you would close the door back and read it. Uh, here is the Agilent system. Notice they still call it a carry. So they still name their UV vis spectrometers after the original company. They put carry in front and they give it a model number. Um, so they kind of, you know, give respect at least a little bit to the founders of the UV vis spectrometer world. Uh, but it's the same kind of system. This door opens up and you put your sample in, you close the door back and you begin to analyze it. This is computer controlled. Uh, and then over here to the side, if you are familiar with LabQuest, uh, which is a handheld measuring device from Vernier Equipment. Uh, this uh, LabQuest uh, will also take portable UV vis spectrometers. And uh, if you're lucky enough to have or to use these, there's two different versions. Uh, one will look like this down here at the bottom, and the other one will look like this one called the Red Tide version. Some of these do ultraviolet only, some of them do ultraviolet and visible both, and others will do just the visible portion. So it really depends on how much money that uh, your school wants to pay for a portable UV vis instrument that hooks up to your LabQuest system. So uh, if you are lucky enough to have one of these, uh, then pull it out and use it because this really is the same type of theory that's going on with a piece of equipment that looks like this. The only difference really is that this one might be more sensitive, this one's computer controlled, there's software that goes along with the operation of this one, uh, and this one's more simplified. There's no many, There's not too many buttons that you have to mess with or too many settings that you have to do. Uh, and it gives you a very good insight or intro into the UV vis world. Down here at the very bottom is the entire systems now. So this is a UV vis spectrometer and that's hooked up to a computer and this is the type of system that you would be using from us. So stay tuned, we're not done with theory.